morning there, listeners. Thanks again for tuning into Sin's Workshop Podcast. Hope you're all having a great day. So, today we are going to talk about Year of the Witching by, wish I'd written it down. Oh, no, I did. Haha, <laughs> Alexis Henderson, published by Ace. All right, so this novel is one of those novels that really stands out against the crowd because from beginning to end it really does offer the reader um such a such a good it's so i can't even begin to okay it's just very compelling because it deals with a lot of things like racism sexism misogyny um cult mentality it really does deal with a lot of these issues with the storytelling and that's what I thought was really good about it how it was such a thought-provoking and complex read but it was so easy to read and understand you know it follows Emmanuel she lives in this community uh, that's very similar to the Puritan settlements of Massachusetts from back in the day. You know, they do have their own witch trials here as well. But not only does she live in this very um, tightly wound, to put it nicely, community. (laughs) Oh boy, kiddo, playing with my notebooks joined today by my lovely son who is opening my notebooks and playing with them because he's adorable he seems to love books he's always taking them from my hands so (laughs) um you know emmanuel like i was saying emmanuel she lives in this town but what really makes it compelling is the fact that not only is she biracial she was born out of wedlock and her mother um you know her mother was supposed to marry the prophet right the prophet who has like a ton of wives some of which could be the age of their of his own grandkids i mean that's just utterly repulsive but everyone thinks they're honored because you know he's the prophet right but emmanuel's mother she wasn't having it um she attempted to kill him then ran off into the dark woods which is supposed to be the the habitation of the witches that once came to the land of Bethel, that that's the town, and tried to change the way things are. You know, they had two of two of them were lesbians and the others weren't. They were just strong willed women. And I think that says a lot about how this community was formed how it wanted to strip the women of their choices, of their sexuality, of everything that makes them human and just kind of make them play things for men. So that's where the sexism is because the underlying theme of these these witches who were trying to lead a revolution, I mean, they were hunted and killed. Why? Because they were just women who thought differently who lived differently. They didn't do any evil, but in their rage, you know, in their death, I think you get to see evil born. You know, a lot of evil is born in rage. It's it's born in the need for revenge. So the dark dark woods are uh, an unsafe place because of that. They still live there. There are still whispers of them living there. And you really do get to see that in the store. And I thought that was really compelling because these women were figureheads for change and they were killed and Emmanuel she's an outcast <laughs> my cat Tintin is here and my son really wants to pet her because he loves cats <laughs> um, I thought it was a compelling read. I loved how it dealt with this sort of cult mentality, 
how it dealt with racism and bigotry and misogyny <laughs> in its storytelling. Be- because Emmanuel, you know, she really is a strong character. She does live as an outcast. Um, and you get to see the racism prevalent, not just in her representation in the novel, but also the representation of the people who live on the outskirts, you know. They live on the outskirts of Bethel. They aren't really allowed in Bethel because they are dark-skinned people. And that's how you see the racism, you know. They are forced to beg for scraps at the city gate because they're not allowed in the city gate. All because of the color of their skin, you know. They are banned from the city that says it's their salvation. I mean, if that's not blatant racism, I don't know what is. And then the way that they treat Emmanuel. I mean, you can see the racism and how... Oh, boy. Oh, boy. My son's trying to get hold of my phone and trying to record. As you can see, I took my phone away from him, so that made him very angry. Here, play with mommy's notebook. (laughs) But I thought that was really interesting to see this racism, you know, so prevalent in this puritanical era. And it really is reminiscent of the puritanical ways of ancient times. So, you know, it really is complex, you know, it really is emotional <laughs> as far as storytelling goes because it does deal with a lot of issues that we as a society are still facing today. You know, we're still facing bigotry and racism and inequality and ha- and how women are treated. So to see this stuff, these topics, put into this lens that almost mirrors historical fiction, you know, it really does make the reader think because you're just like, oh, wow, we think we've come such a long way from the Salem witch trials, but really we've just found different ways to hold witch trials, I think. And I think that's a really powerful message behind the novel. And I love powerful messages like that, that really showcase just how important dealing with these topics is, why they should be talked about, why they should be dealt with. And I think Henderson did an excellent job in conveying her message in this story. Uh, as for the story, you know, itself, you know, while it deals with a lot of these tough issues, it doesn't lose sight of what it's trying to do. And what it's trying to do is, you know, tell a story. That's what all novels are trying to do. Yes, they all have, like, a message to convey to the reader, but they also just want to tell a story to entertain the reader. And this novel is entertaining. It has a lot of built-up pen- tension. It has a very good development because Emmanuel, she does grow as a character. She grows to be the savior of these people, to find the strength in herself to control the darkness and wield it as a weapon against against the darkness. You know, she turns the darkness in on itself so that she can find the goodness and save the people that are good, who don't deserve everything that is happening. Um, She wants to inspire change, and she does so. You know, she makes such a powerful impact. And that ending scene with all the women standing by Emmanuel, I thought that was such a good and powerful scene because you could see the story building up to this moment. And it's so gratifying to see this moment come to fruition and come to life because it shows the reader how much Emmanuel has grown on her journey 
of discovering her mother's past, of discovering, um, you know, the, the darkness and the magic and reconnecting with her roots, you know, her father's roots, her father who was a man of color and who was burned at the stake for defiling the prophet's would-be wife. I mean, it's such an impactful story. It's so emotional. And it really is compelling to read. It's compelling to see this journey unfold, to see this story be told. And I love how relatable it is to present times. But I also love how Henderson grounds the reader in connecting it to you know, the Salem witch trials in a way, uh, the Puritans and their religious beliefs. I do like that. And I like the history, uh, behind the religion in this novel as well. I really do think it is worth discussing. I think it is interesting to see it be developed and explored through the storytelling. So this one, Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is honestly an exceptional novel. Um, it didn't quite hit five stars for me just because, you know, while it is a steady story, while it does deal with a lot of important issues, it just didn't hit that wow factor for me because a novel to get like five stars for me has to like just hit like wow for me. Um, but it is still really good. So I do want to give it four stars. Um, if you want to go ahead and purchase the book, I recommend purchasing it off of bookshop.org. Uh, bookshop.org is a great place for purchasing books because a percentage of all your of all sales do go to supporting local booksellers. If money is too tight, which you know I know for a lot of us it is, myself included, um, go ahead and check out the book from your local library. Libraries are a great resource for the community, and if they don't have it, you can always recommend it, and then. They'll put it on hold for you, so once they get it in, you'll be notified ASAP. Um, and I hope you will support me by liking my podcast and following it. You can become a supporter on Anchor. A uh, link for that is in the description of this podcast. Anchor is the platform which I record, and for 99 cents a month, you can help me make Sins Work Top Podcast even better. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and as always, happy reading. Mm-hmm.